Hi everyone, it's Andrea, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a quick colouring chart in the Harry Potter a Chibi colouring book. Um, somebody requested this, so I'm happy to do it, as I, you know, I wanted the book anyway. Um, so yeah, we're just going to have a quick colouring chart. I've got my markers here, my Arteza Everblend, and my Skin Tone Touch News. And I'm just going to do this one of... Um, Snape, Harry and Ron and I've just got to find the colours where's the one I want there it is and uh, we'll do their skin first and we'll start with the skin so yeah we'll start up here with Snape I'm going to use a very little skin white because that's a very pale colour so I just want to say thank you for sticking with me. Thank you for being so understanding. I had to take a break over the past week. I'll get into that in a minute and uh, tell you a bit more about that. And yeah, welcome back if you are um, a long time or a subscriber and hello if you're fairly new. I mean, I welcome everybody. It's, We'll have a bit of fun and we just colour and relax and we'll talk about things. So thank you for being understanding as to why I, I didn't, you know, I haven't explained what's happened. But last Sunday, um, it's been a hell of a week, I tell you, last Sunday a very close friend of mine died. Um, so I knew she'd been ill but I didn't know how serious it was and uh, they weren't expecting her to die as suddenly as she did but she passed away last Sunday. She was only in her sixties. She's somebody I worked with many years ago and I was very close to her and her family at one point spending Christmas night with them and oh, we used to go everywhere together. We used to work together so working together we used to um, just hang out all the time. So that knocked me for six to be honest. Jennifer's also been playing up uh, at night not wanting to sleep. She's been uh, getting up very very early and then not going back or coming into my room because she says she's scared and all sorts of things like that. So yeah last night was the first night that Jennifer actually slept the entire night through so I am abs I was absolutely shattered. Um, she'd be getting up at 11 or 12 and then wanting to go downstairs and I'd be like no come in mummy's room and take her into the spare room and we'd, uh, she'd eventually drop off. One night she fell off the bed so, and then uh, when she went back to sleep I put her in her room. And she was like, no mummy's bed. And I'm like, no Jennifer, you're on yours. And she was fine then, she went straight back to sleep anyway. So after that, um, next night it happened again. And then on Thursday, um, I was watching TV with her upstairs in the bedroom and my mum rang and I thought, oh, what's going on? And she was like, can you get me the number for the vet? I'm like, what, what's going on? She said, I think the dog's dead. I'm like, what? She said, yeah, she's dead. I said, all right, all right, I'll get the number. I'll, I'll, you know. So I got the number, rang her back and said, look, I'm on my way down. And she went, do you want me to wait? I said, no, ring the vet now. I'll be down as soon as I can. So I got down there and I went in and Rose is just lying by the sofa. My dad says, I can't tell whether she's breathing or not, I'm shaking too much. So um, I sat on the floor and stroked her and put my hand up to her nose, nothing. I put my hand on her chest, nothing. I said, no, she's not breathing, she's gone. Um, so, and then the vet, we usually use, said, oh no, bring her in tomorrow. And I'm not like, my parents can't cope with that. They're too old. So we rang a different vet and they said, yeah, you can bring her down just to dispose of the body. It's a horrible thing to say, but it's like an undertaker, but obviously with COVID, everything's all over the place. Bring her down, they paid over the phone. Uh, ring us when you get there, not a problem. We'll, we'll take her off her hand. So they took all the details on the dog and everything. So me and Dad put her in the boot of my car because my boot's really flat and it's big. And uh, covered her with her blanket 
and uh, took her down to the vet and they came out. One of the girls came out and said, oh, she's a bit big, isn't she? And we were going to lift her and she said, no, no, it's fine. Just leave her there and we'll get a stretcher. And I'll get one of my colleagues in a stretcher and we'll come and get her. So they, they lifted her on there and we said goodbye and, and they, they took her away. And she was heartbreaking. She did have a heart murmur and she had it when we got her. She was uh, five when we got her. Ex breeding show dog. Uh, she had a heart murmur and we knew that her heart would get her in the end and that's probably all that happened is that her heart gave out. Apparently they said she was screaming and I recently looked it up and said when dogs die naturally they do, as they lose control of their abilities, they do scream um, and they don't know what's going on, they don't feel anything, um, which is good. Uh, but of course, as you can understand, it kind of knocked us all for six, especially having gone through the other thing with my friend on the weekend and then the dog and I've just not wanted to film or colour. I've hardly coloured the last few days. I've done a little bit, but mostly it's just layering on something I've already coloured just to finish that bit off. Yesterday was the first night I felt like colouring again properly and I haven't been reading, I haven't been sleeping properly, I haven't been watching TV. I've just been trying to keep Jennifer happy because as she's only three, she does not understand that Rosie's dead. She does not know what death is. She's too too young to get it. Um, so when I got back on Thursday night, I said to her, look, Rosie's had to go away. We won't be able to see her anymore, but she loved you very much. And she looked at me, she said, Rosie, she said, I know, but she's, go she's gone away. And we're not going to see her again. And then today she was on about Rosie and I went, no, Rosie's gone. Remember I told you Rosie's gone away? No, Rosie not gone. Um, so I've got that to, to deal with again to try and make her understand that although she doesn't want Rosie to be gone, Rosie's gone. None of us wanted Rosie on, but she was she was 11, she had a heart murmur. More than likely her heart just failed. It gave out. Poor dog. Um, she's not suffering, she's not going to suffer and she's at peace and she had seven years, because we had her almost seven years of life that she wouldn't have had, of happy life that she wouldn't have had had she not stayed with us because the people that owned it for were breeders and there's nothing wrong with that and they were showed, showed, they showed their dogs at places like Crafts and various other dog shows and um, she didn't want to be shown, she had a heart murmur the last litter she had, all pups but one died so they said they weren't going to do it and she would have had to have gone into, she'd have been just given to the dog's trust and she probably never would have found a home because of her heart murmur and um, so she came to us and she was very timid, very placid. She, she'd never been allowed on the sofa. They were kept in kennels outside, which I, I can't judge them for that because that is, they were running a business, but to me a dog is a pet, not a commodity. And uh, there you go. Um, they didn't get any fuss unless they were in the house. The girls only came into the house when they were expecting puppies. And she had one dog that was her pet and he was treated as such. They would, they had a big field to run around in, but they were never road taught. So Rosie would not go for a walk properly because she hated to go near the roads because it frightened her because she didn't, she didn't like it because she hadn't been acclimatised to it. But she was a very sweet, carey, very, very, very loving dog. Very loving dog. Um, very placid and timid and very rarely barked, very rarely whined. She would never lick you. I think she licked me once in the seven years because had she done that to where she, the people that owned her before, she would have probably been told off. If you raised her voice to her, she would cower. She was the epitome of an abused dog without, you know, she was a dog that needed love and affection and attention. 
and she got that with us. So I was there with her on the last day because I'd gone to check my mum was all right because of her ankle still being poorly, especially in this um, horrendously cold weather. And um, I was stroking her and brushing her and she was fine. And that morning she'd been playing and jumping around with um, this toy she had. And it was very unexpected, but also not particularly unexpected because she did have, she did have a heart murmur. So, sorry, I do apologise if I'm going to take a long time colouring because I'm thinking about it. We had some lovely times with her. She had, she had a good life with my mum and dad and me and she was as much my dog as theirs, which is why uh, as soon as they called, I went down and because mum was like, oh, thank you for coming, thank you for coming. I said, well, she was my dog too. Actually, she was as much my dog as she was yours and dad's. And they were like, yeah, she was. And, um, uh, so yeah she was lovely so that's why I've not been around much because I've had the death of a human friend and the death of a doggy friend to deal with this week and I gotta be honest I don't know if I could cope if anything bad happened again this week <laughs> you've been a couple of weeks if something else happens please I just couldn't couldn't cope Pets are part of the family, they are, you know, they are part of the family. But other than that, I've just been working and crying, obviously. I cried a lot on, on Sunday night, Monday. And I cried Thursday when I saw her there and that, that image would be stuck in my head for a long time of her just lying there on the floor, lifeless. And, uh, yeah, just a lot of crying. I've been overtired because of Jennifer keeping me awake and I had a good long sleep though today. I slept, Paul let me sleep in. She knows that uh, if Jennifer gets up, it's me. She's going to try and wake up and bother. But this morning, Paul was actually up and uh, when Jennifer woke up, he got her to go downstairs with him. She did try and come and get me, I was in the spare room because I haven't been sleeping, it's not fair on Paul. And uh, he uh, kept her occupied until I, I got up. And then, uh, yeah, everything it was fine then, and we just uh, cracked on with it, really. So we went out for a walk. This is Saturday today, you'll see in this Sunday, but it was Saturday. And it's... Uh, was snowing a bit, not heavy. It was heavy enough, but not enough to settle and cause any problems. But uh, funny enough, my dad gave Jennifer a Hogwarts backpack the other day. Because the backpack we used to take her stuff to nursery is too big and she insists on carrying it now. It was all right when I was carrying it or Paul was carrying it, but she won't let us do it for her anymore, so. She uh, insists on doing it now. So we'll do, probably do this over two sessions, I think. I don't want to rush it. I'm not in the mood for rushing. Um, but I'm okay. I, I felt today is the best, best I've felt all week, I'll be honest. I feel a bit better. I mean, I still miss the dog. I'm very sad that she's not going to be there next time I visit my parents, which is probably tomorrow because they'll want some shopping. And uh, Jennifer will have to come with me and she's not going to understand why the dog's not there. She's going to want to see Rose. She goes, see Rose? I'm like, no darling, we can't see Rose anymore. Rose has had to go away and it, it breaks my heart. Because she doesn't understand death. She wouldn't understand her if I said, Rosie's dead, you're never going to, you know. And she says, she's gone away and we can't see her anymore, but she loves you very much. She always got worried when Jennifer would cry. Because of having puppies, she remembered that they cry when you need them, when they need you. So she'd get upset when she cried. You know, what colour shall I do in the bubbles? I don't know yet. Oops. <laughs> yeah, so it's just one of those things. You yeah, know, I'll, I'll recover. But yeah, I am hurting a bit at the moment. 
for both reasons. My friend and my my dog. So <laughs> So what are you all up to? What have you been doing? Are you all okay? I hope you're all keeping well. Um I said it's been snowing here, it's not not cold like it is in some places, we get to about minus three or four I am. Um Tredigo was minus eight, somewhere in Scotland was minus twenty-two, but here it was about minus three, it's not too bad. I know there are places that have it worse. We're not used to it, I don't mind the cold so much, I sleep pretty much um, with the window open all year round. It's closed at the moment, it's not quite too cold I close it, if it gets to the point where I think it's getting a bit warm. Because of my sizes, I get the headache, so I switch it, open it up again. Um, but yeah. I do um, Snape's outfit black, apart from his buttons, which will do a light grey. I know you won't be able to see the join or anything, but that's the thing with black on black. So I'm working on some first impressions. I've actually got three that I am working on. Um, and I will uh, try and get one of them finished soon so I can get one up. I quite enjoy that, using new stuff and seeing how it works and what you can achieve with it. I mean, I know I'm not the best artist and I have a lot of fun. So uh, yeah, I'm actually filming this downstairs in the, in the dining room because our doors are up now and you'll probably see those in the weekly vlog next week because I will do, I'll be back to that next week as well. And uh, Paul's in the other room, I think he's gone, he's getting ready to go to bed. He's watching, watching The Voice. He has, he's been watching The Voice. I don't really watch stuff like that, it's all right. I just, the auditions is the best bit. After that, I'm not interested. <laughs> but yeah. Like I said, this is only going to be a short one. Maybe half an hour or so, so and then we'll finish it off in the next one. I just wanted to, to check in with you. I'm actually just going to cover his buttons up and I'll put some uh, silver gel pen on them later, on there later. I have been trying to watch some YouTube, but my mind's not been on it, so I've just been... Ah, it's better. Chuggling on it and seeing what I can do. <laughs> but... Yeah. Weird old week, I'm afraid. A very weird week for me. All the books I've been trying to read on my phone, on my Kindle app, they've been not very good. Oops, that shouldn't have been black, but it is now, so it's part of that. I don't think it matters really, does it? <laughs> it's me just like, oh, I'll just do this. But I just can't get into it. I'm reading one. It's good. I'm enjoying it. It's called Ghostland. And... There's a bit of Snape's hand there. But I, um, and it's, it's good, but I think, I just can't get into it. And I think it's partly because of what's been going on. Do you know what I mean? I still haven't read the Stephen King book this month because the thought of reading it makes me sad. Because <laughs> it's, um, the, uh, The Green Mile. 
and I love the story, I love the film, but it is sad. I have read the book before, so why I'm worrying about it, I don't know. Um, let's do that bit, and I'll have a little smoke there. And there. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? I'll probably have to do his hair, because Harry's hair's black, in a very dark grey, so it's slightly a different colour. And the same with Snape's hair, because Snape's hair's black, but you can't have to do his with grey and black. But it'll be a very dark grey. Like I said, I'm not really worrying about the lines on his robe, because he would just... This is sweet. I got several whips on the go again. I know I'm saying I'm not going to do them, I'm trying to finish them off, but I am. I've nearly finished my Kirby Rosanna's. I still haven't finished my um, Johanna Basford one. I'm going to have to crack on with that. I just. I love Johanna Basford, but the calendar, I'm just like, ugh. I love it, but I'm thinking, why did I buy it? And now I thought, well, and now I realise I can do it in markers. So why don't I just do it in markers? Because obviously the back page is nothing on it. As far as I know. I have to check it. And if there's nothing on it, I should just get crack out some of the alcohol markers or the shot larks, the Everblends, and just colour it and have done with it like that. But we will have to see. I'm going to have a look at it tonight when I go out because I've got some markers upstairs I can use. So. But I do want to go to bed soon. So I'm, I am a bit tired. So I thought, I, you know, you, you are, you're my fans. My, my mum are fans. You're my friends. And I thought, you know, you need, you deserve to know what's going on and why I've not been making videos so much but I gotta get back into to it. My life is still going on, it's not ending and my friend would not want me to stop and Rose certainly wouldn't. She was always pleased to see us. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I have got to start uh, trying to finish this book, Ghost Land. I did read a really good series recently called Barclay Street by a guy named Ron Ripley, and he writes horror um, and ghost stories. And that was so good. I really want to read some more of his, so I'm going to have to look for some more of his, I think. The thing is with my Kindle Unlimited, um, I share it with my mum, because she reads loads as well. So I have to download books that she'll read. She is currently reading Berkeley's Barclay Street. Um, cause she likes ghost stories and I thought she might like that one. Um, she probably wouldn't like the one I'm reading, there's a bit too much swearing, she's not big on swearing. Or, you know, she likes a good story. And they are good. So hopefully she's enjoying those cause there's like, hmm, nine of them. Keep it going for a bit. I read them all very quickly. Uh, oops, I've just cut it in Harry's arm. That's all right, I'll just make it look like that. Sometimes it is hard to, to see where you're supposed to be. Colouring on here. But, uh, and again, he's going to meld into the, the pot, but that's okay. I'll get some you know, Posca on there or gel pen or something just to shut the edge. And the top bit, I'm going to do a different grey anyway. Is what colour are their jumpers? I don't, they aren't they burgundy? Because they're in um, Gryffindor. I'm going to have to have a look at that. I think Gryffindor was red and gold, wasn't it? Burgundy and gold or maroon and gold. Yeah. Here's 
room. You can see how little I know about uh, Harry Potter. I have got all the books and I have read them all. I don't think I haven't read, I haven't read The Cursed Child or The Cursed Child, whatever they bloody call it yet. I have got it, I just haven't read it. I've got so many books that I haven't read yet. It's quite uh, amazing. Mm. I'll find a dark grey now for Snape's hair. Oops, I'm going to knock all my brute fanners on the floor. What's this colour? Lava grey, that's a very dark one. So as you can see, it's, uh, I'm going to have to pull the camera out slightly so I can move the, the book. Hang on, let's move it again slightly. Hmm. Let me just, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll just turn this bit up slightly like that so you can see there. There we go, that's better. Sometimes you just need to adjust the angle slightly. So this is a very dark grey, almost black, but it's not black, so. I'm going to use a different colour on it as well. I'm going to put some black in there as well in a minute just to. It is, it is a dark grey. I'll use that on Harry's head as well. It's just so it stands out a bit. Flop of hair. Then I can give him black rimmed glasses. At least one's got red hair. We use some greys up on the walls as well, which is great because I never use my greys. Let's just do his glasses. Get in there slowly.
<laughs> I can't like this one. I also like the one of Hermione on the next page. I want to do that one. I've been loving watching everybody's 10 books to finish in 2020. And I'm thinking, yeah, it's never going to happen. I'll be lucky to finish one book in 2020. I've got so many books and I'm just happy to colour what I feel like without putting pressure on myself to actually finish a book. I have got some easy mandala books that I've done a load in. I could probably push to finish, but I'm not that bothered. Does that make sense? There we go. That'll do for sneak. We are nearly at 30 minutes. We will go a bit longer. I'll see the camera will turn off in a minute, but uh, let's have a look. Um, Rom. Yeah, I've got Rom's hair. Let's do that. Oops, something just fell on the floor. I'll go and pick that up in a minute. Red, so ginger for Ron. Fun. This is just so fun. It's just so chilled. Just sitting here. Just this is just such a fun picture. It's such a fun little book that I'm just quite enjoying just scribbling the colours on. And you know, there's no stress like working in something like Fairy Touch of Magic or Kirby Rosanna's. You want to be careful. You want to make it look as good as you can make it. But something like this is just ah, it's just a bit of nice colouring. So yeah. Yeah, back to normal next week. I've got to, well, it's not technically, I've got two days off to do some stuff in Jennifer's room because at the moment she's got no curtain up. So the guy that plastered it is coming to put the curtain and the blind up on Monday morning. So at least it'd be nice and warm in there. I mean, it's not too bad. I'm making sure it's staying warm. And then um, uh, I've got Wednesday and Thursday off. I couldn't get Friday off. Too busy. They always say that. And um, to, to put the seal paint over the the plaster. So I seal the plaster with a coat of. Um, hopefully, I'll get most of that done on. Uh, oh, got itchy head. Um, Tuesday and Wednesday, and then I can book another day off to put the main coat on her her room because. Uh, yeah, yeah. Having some red and, you know, red, I'm talking about the picture, I think. Um, she's having some paint and what I've done is I'm going to get some A4 picture frames or what they call certificate frames and I am going to colour some pictures for her. Of, um, I'm thinking dinosaurs to start with, because she loves dinosaurs. So there's Jade Swap Summer, a dinosaur book for children, and I've ordered it. And I'm going to cut them out with a, a Stanley knife. Um, and uh, pop them on her pop them into frames and then when uh, it's put, put them on the wall and then when she changes her mind and doesn't like dinosaurs anymore and um, perhaps she'll like um, I don't know Barbie or Paw Patrol or she likes Peppa Pig so I'll probably do some Peppa Pig ones I can take them out and swap them with say pictures of fairies and stuff and then they can go into my a full folder of um, PDF pictures or, you know, free pictures I've downloaded off of the internet. So that's the idea with that. So just change the pictures as she she changes. Which will be nice. I'm looking forward to that. I'll probably just colour them brightly with markers. And, uh, you know, see how it goes. So I'm not going to do too much more because I will do another video on this because there's still plenty of colouring to do. There's the, the rest of the boys, the jumpers, 
um, the valves, the walls, the shelves, some more of the containers and things. So we can do one of these next week. I'll finish this off. Yeah. I've got to decide what colour to do the smoke. Not sure what colour to do the smoke yet and the writing. That's this bit up here, the double trouble and all this smoke coming out of the, the cauldron. Should I do it the same as the goo? What colour should I do that? Should I do it green? Should I do it blue? Should I do it <clears throat> purple? I'm going to do some of the corks in the bottles. This one's, some of them would be glass corks actually. Most of them probably are, but I'm going to do them corks. Like that. That's a cork. Let's see. See that one? I would say here is a glass stopper and that's a cork so we'll do that and these ones over here are corks and there's a couple of corks up there as well so we'll do those in a minute I haven't done those files but uh, I will in a minute. Okay, let's do this one. I'm enjoying this. I really am enjoying this one. So I hope you can hear me okay. I'm talking quite quietly because obviously Paul's in the other room watching the voice or whatever's on. I don't know if the voice is still on. It might be. The one on that one as well. There we go. That's that. We are actually at four, four, three, five minutes, so we've got a bit of time yet, so I want a nice dark brown. The only thing I'd say in the, this ever blend set is there's not a lot of dark, there's no dark browns. I've got one which is uh, a cinnamon colour, which is sort of a red brown. There's no like wood brown. There's haze on that, I think that one will do. That's for the, for the desk, so we'll do that bit now and that will probably take us to the end. So you would be able to see the desk through the bottles, which is why I'm going to be colouring about that there. So to be honest, that would be desk all across there as well. So I'm just gonna make that desk. Yeah, I can hear somebody warbling on TV. sweet this picture. Do you remember these chemistry desks at uh, school? They were always really dark. And you should really be able to see that through there isn't it? It's angle. Well, that would be seen through there. I can think about it, I can see them, I can see the Bunsen burners and everything and I can smell it. The smell of the um, chemistry lab at school. Back in the days when you actually did the experiments yourself, you didn't just watch the teachers do it. Yes kids, we used to do the experiments ourselves. Now all this health and safety, you don't. Yeah, I'll do that bit as well. It's that bit as well. I'm not having a good day. Oh well, could be worse. There we are. So the First Minister in Wales, Mark Drayford, is talking about when they review it, maybe lifting a few restrictions next week. It won't be many. Their main priority is trying to get the schools back, which is understandable because the kids are missing out on so much being stuck at home. Home learning is, is good, it's fine. I would have enjoyed it more. 
but kids do need to be out and about with kids their own age and socialising and school, although it's a learning environment, it's also a social environment. Um, I mean, I'm lucky that the, the nursery's still open, so Jennifer's still been going. It gives her, I mean, she loves it, she's learning so much and her speech is brilliant now, it's coming on. She, She'll actually say something, it'll amazingly make sense. Some words she can't pronounce properly, like she was saying earlier that the... What was it? What dinosaur was that? It was a... We were talking about dinosaurs, it was one of the plant eaters. I can't remember which one. It wasn't Stegosaurus. I think it was Triceratops or something like that. One of those ones. And she says, he eats pants. And I thought, why is he eating pants? And I realised she meant plants. I was like, yes, he does eat plants. And she said, uh, Rex doesn't eat plants, meaning Tyrannosaurus doesn't eat plants, which is right. Tyrannosaurus Rex didn't eat plants. He eat a vet. Muge. I said, no, eat a vet. Ew. And I said, no, actually, what I said. Is who does what does uh Rex eat then? And he went, she went, yeah, yeah. And I went, yeah, yeah. Well, that's not very good. Yeah, yeah, is if I can find him. That's not good. Usually put me in there. Here's um, Andy Day from Children's BBC from Andy's Dinosaurs Adventures. She calls him yeah, yeah for some reason. Don't know why. Sometimes she says Andy, um, but mostly she says yeah, yeah. So sometimes she'll say like Yaya yeah, yeah, Band for Andy and the Band because she's got their CD in the car. Well, they've got two, but she's got one of the two. And then other times she'll say Andy Band. But I know what she means. When I figured out who Yaya yeah, yeah was, it was fine. So, so yeah, I'm going to do that with the dinosaur, but I'm just going to cut it up and put it in. Put the picture she wants on her walls and then the rest of them will go in my fold, A4 folder with the cover. I don't normally like to cut my books up but that one I will because it's for Jennifer's room. Um, and what does it matter, it's still going to be coloured in and I'm still going to colour the pictures in but it's just that it's for her room. And then when she gets bored with it and wants something else I can take it out of the frame and uh, put it uh, in my folder with the rest of them. So that's my plan and I'll probably start colouring that when it comes this week. It'll be hauled and then uh, I'll say this is the one, you know. Again, it's going to be a huge haul. I've got a few books, obviously this is one of them. I've got another one arriving Monday. I think I, I went a bit, not mad because I haven't bought hundreds of them or like loads, like sometimes last year I was buying 20 a month. But I, I did buy, order myself one when I heard my friend died. And then I ordered the dinosaur one when, I, when Rosie died. Even though, that, I mean, that's partly for Jennifer's room. I'm not worried about it. I also ordered her another waffle t-shirt because the other one she's got is falling apart because Mummy keeps putting it in the tumble dryer so the, the plastic's fading. It's not cracked. It's just the picture's fading. It's supposed to just dry it in the air dryer. So I do try and do it, but... Sometimes I forget, I'm only human. I think Paul's getting ready for bed, so we'll be finishing this up for today in a minute and then we'll do the rest of it another time. Some of the bits we've done have been quite fiddly to be fair, like going around the um, part of the bottles and the bits, but there's still quite a lot to do. And then we've done 40 minutes. I, I do like this book, it's kind of cute. Like I said, I've got a few whips on the go. I'm doing um, one in the Yampuff collection, Dreams collection book. That's the one I'm doing upstairs in bed at the moment. And then I've got Fairy Touch of Magic and Kirby Rosanna's down here in uh, the living room, which I do during the day if I get a chance. Because sometimes Jennifer will just sit and play and she doesn't want me to. I say, do you want me to come? And she's like, no, she wants to play on her own. If she wants me to play, then I play. Um, or in the evening when she's gone to bed sometimes I'll, I'll sit in colour and you know especially of course watching football quite happy to let him watch football all the rugby because obviously Six Nations is on at the moment and he does like his sports so I'm quite happy to let him watch it I mean that's on earlier so it's hard for him to watch it because of Jennifer but 
I sort of went out for a walk today and when it was snowing, oof, wasn't it cold? It was bitter. Even Paul said, I've got to face it, it's too cold to go for long walks. But uh, he did go down the shop, I think, as well. You know, he'll say, I'm right, I'm just nipping down the shop. I'm like, all right then, carry on. Well, you yeah, know. So he does get a bit of a walk, not a huge walk. But he does. Right. That's good for your minutes. So I'm going to call it a day for tonight because uh, it's getting on. So this is our Harry Potter, chippy Harry Potter picture so far. I'm really liking it, so yeah. I like Snape, I think Snape looks quite good actually. Um, like I said, there's not that much to do. There's, we could do some grey blocks and, and the thing. Um, so the next one might be a bit longer, but that's okay, I don't mind. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. It won't be as long before the next colouring chat, I do promise you. I am feeling a lot better. Um, so thank you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.